It's our first like major rain since we've been to the Bahamas. But we're doing a lot of washing. Our friend from Barefoot Adventures is coming over to help us set our uh, tension in our stays. Actually, I think that's him right now. <laughs> Since we would be motorless, we wanted to have our rigging optimized for our sail across the Gulf Stream. Joe from Barefoot Adventures came over and showed us how to use his tension gauge. First confirm the size of the cable and then use the handy chart to determine the tension strength. So, set this on here. And then you would take a reading up here, which... Hey! Oh, wow, <laughs> cool. So, but he doesn't give like a, a pound in, in inches. No, I, I know. Mean, that's a, 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 it started raining so I went inside. They're still working out there. First we adjusted the shrouds to ensure that our mast was straight. Once we had a straight mast, we tightened the backstays only to realise that we needed to adjust our forestay. Neither of us knew where the adjustment was on our furler, but with the help of the internet, we found the turnbuckle hidden within the furler itself. So Joe found our hidden turnbuckle. Yay! Yeah. Okay, are you checking up on their work? Heck is an indoor cat, he's not used to rain. Next up on the boat chore list was swapping out our nav light. We replaced a 20 watt incandescent bulb with a 3 watt LED and had no reduction in luminosity. This would greatly reduce our power usage on our overnight passage to the US, which was useful as we wouldn't be charging the battery with the engine. Of course, things don't always go as planned. Changing the bulb didn't work, so I attempted to rewire the system. Unfortunately, a brass connection broke off and then the guys had to research ways to fix it. I was left up the mast for a while twiddling my toes, but at least I had a great view. Uncomfortable for you. Heck, you watch him, I'm doing. In the end, our good friend Joe went up to fix the wiring, finishing just before a huge thunderstorm rolled in. Just leaving Hopetown. There's the beautiful lighthouse. Heading for Green Turtle. It's one of the few rainy days we've had in the Bahamas. Yeah, but we've done worse than this, so <laughs> it's not too bad. How is the uh, sails going after we uh, redid the stays? Haven't really noticed much difference yet. It's about the same, like half of the wind speed, but um, I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> I'm relaxing inside. I have my swimmers on. I'm ready to go outside. It's a little chilly. This is the whale in the Abacos. It's a sandbank that most boats have to go around, which means going on the outside, exposing yourself to the ocean. But with our shallow draft, we can just skip right over it. We can use the colour of the water to determine how shallow it is. Judging by the uh, aqua colour here, we should be fine going across this. Uh, we also obviously have a depth sensor, but using the colour of the water, we can determine the depth far in advance.
Options for exercise are limited while on a boat. I had gotten into the habit of practicing yoga in the morning or after a long passage. We're in Green Turtle Key. Starting to look at our crossing back to the States and trying to appreciate every last sunset. Now cooking a grunt. It's a fish. And eggplant as well because it makes me eat vegetables. <laughs> no scurvy for you. Yet. Sunset on this side. Full moon rise on this side. It's barbecue time. Eggplant. Eggplant. <laughs> the sun is reflecting off those clouds in the bottom. It's beautiful. And the moon's turning pink. Okay, that's maybe zoomed in a little too much. Craig's on the search for homemade ice cream. They're out of homemade ice cream, which means it's good homemade ice cream. <laughs> Still on the search. Green Turtle Key was named after the once abundant green turtles that inhabited the area. Its main settlement is New Plymouth, which, like Hopetown, was originally a loyalist settlement. The Loyalist Memorial Sculpture Garden is a Bahamian national monument featuring 24 busts of prominent Bahamians. Walking around this charming settlement, one will often encounter chickens. A new chick had gotten separated from its mother and we helped them reunite. The Alfred Lowe Museum offers a glimpse into how life was in the early days of New Plymouth. We were lucky enough to meet descendant Alton Lowe who was working on the model ships in the museum. In order to conserve water while in the Bahamas, we wash our dishes in seawater with biodegradable dish soap and then do a fresh water rinse. Our boat's there, our laptop's there, and we're uploaded. We apologize for being so behind on our video editing as we've been a little bit too busy sailing. Now that we're finishing our trip, we want to find cats away some new owners. We'll put a link in the description to a listing and we'll have an upcoming video reviewing our gem in more detail. Thanks for watching!